true leadership be within the maritime uh, domain is important. Uh, and in my view is that uh, that true leadership should translate into a situation where the leaders that are involved in this domain should be more holistic in approach in terms of dealing all the, with all the problems uh, within the maritime uh, situation. And that, in the first place, means that uh, leadership needs to recognize that the, the problem of maritime threats cannot be solved by only one approach. They need to recognize that they need to be a multilateral approach in terms of dealing with all the problems that are existing there. What does that mean? It means then that uh, leadership within this uh, maritime domain uh, needs to encourage cooperation either within a region, within a continent, and also within the entire world so that uh, there can be much more solution to the problems that we see uh, manifesting in front of us. For me, that's what it means true leadership in as far as the uh, maritime domain is concerned. Training of uh, uh, members beyond their own individual country capability uh, is very important. For instance, if we accept that uh, no single country can solve the problems of uh, maritime security and challenges. It means then that uh, our training should begin to move beyond our confined individual countries' uh, way of training. We need to make sure that uh, our combatants know how to work within a joint environment. We need to make sure that as we train our uh, individual uh, uh, soldiers and uh, maritime specialists, they need to be in a position to uh, operate within a, a combined environment. That is very important because if they are limited in terms of their training, they won't be effective in operating within the joint and combined uh, environment. So yes, we need to recognize that and we need to put it into our training, how we train our people. That will be very important, yes. Currently, we are in the process of renewing our assets. Uh, if I can just give you a little bit of a background, the, the maritime air capability that we have is as old as 66 years uh, old, and uh, we are still using it. Uh, but of course, the threat that we have and the development of the uh, situation around our coastal lines and so on, and the responsibility that South Africa has to play within the region is quite huge. So it's really, uh, there, is a, 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 there is no doubt that we need to renew our capabilities in as far as this is concerned. Now, with regards to the strategy that is being followed to renew these capabilities, um, it's happening within the context where in South Africa there is a process of uh, defense review. The entire defense review uh, is taking place in South Africa at the moment. And this is a process that is being uh, headed by the Minister of Defense. There is a special committee that has been appointed to do the whole defense review. Now, this is a very important process because at the end of this process, it should clearly state what type of defense that South Africa should have into the next uh, coming 40 years, 50 years it will actually give a very clear picture what type of uh, threats and also associated uh, capabilities that South Africa needs to have moving forward. So this has got a direct impact in terms of what specific maritime air capabilities that would uh, be necessary for the, SA, for the South African National Defense Force and for the South African Air Force in particular. So it's a very important process. And that is why the interaction that is happening between that process and what uh, the South African Air Force is looking at in terms of the future air assets, these processes actually are working uh, or are being coordinated very closely 
because they've got a direct impact in each other. Coming to the issue of the, the principle uh, that we would like to follow in uh, determining what kind of a maritime uh, capability that we'll have in the future. One, we would like to follow a principle and this principle has got to do with uh, uh, it's, it's a principle that has got to do with a outcome-based approach. In other words, it's an effect-based uh, uh, approach. And what does it mean? It, it simply means that uh, we are not going to go for a X platform or Y platform. But what we are going to say, we are going to say to ourselves, what kind of outcomes as the South African National Defense Force or as the South African Air Force would like to impact out in the maritime domain. That outcome will then determine what type of assets that we will, uh, will, we will uh, require into the future. And those assets could be a certain kind of platform, it could be a combination of platforms, it could be UAVs, it could be quite a number of combinations depending of, on the outcome that we would like to impact out there. That's the first principle. The second principle that we, we are strongly encouraging it's a principle that says that uh, whatever assets that will be put out there, it, will be, it should be the assets that are much more uh, interoperable with other assets that we already have. It should be an asset that uh, can do much more than one role instead of having just uh, a asset that does only a specific role. It should be a, an asset that can give us a number of um, uh, a number of outputs or a number of results using one platform. So those are the principal considerations that actually we are looking at so that we can save on a number of uh, aspects. There are quite uh, a number of lessons from, from the past that we we are going to consider and take into cognizance uh, moving forward as we define our uh, future defense uh, uh, strategy and actually the force design of the future. Uh, one of the things that I believe from my point of view as the lessons of the past is that uh, as we define the future defense uh, strategy and uh, the force design is that we need to take cognizance of the environmental analysis uh, and the context under which one South Africa is going to play its role uh, that's one consideration and a lesson that we need to make sure that it is embedded in our analysis and secondly we need also to take into cognizance uh, of the ever-changing uh, threat around us if I can make a, a, a clear example today we have uh, the piracy threat, which is continuously coming up. But if we focus uh, our attention back in about maybe 20 years ago, or maybe 10 years back, the piracy was not as prominent as it is today. So in, in us crafting the, the future Defense Force uh, strategy of South Africa, we need to make sure that uh, our scanning in terms of the, the threat analysis is very actually much informed. Much informed also of the possible unforeseen threats that we don't see them today, which might actually come up into the future. That is not going to be very easy. Uh, it's going to be very hard, but we need to really to exercise our minds very deeply because if we miss that, it will be very difficult uh, for us downstream to come up with the required assets if we did not foresee properly what's going to come in the horizon. So those are the very uh, important uh, uh, nuggets that uh, we need really to look at very carefully. The conference, for me, it's a, it's a convergence of uh, specialists and people from different backgrounds looking at a common problem. For me, that is very, very important uh, from that point of view. 
But secondly, in my conclusion, I made a, uh, a reference to a African proverb that says that if you want to walk uh, fast, you walk alone. But if you want to walk a long distance, you walk together. That is the, the essence of the conference like this, because it then says that uh, the, the maritime challenges that we face today, they are not going to be solved just like this in a moment. It's going to take a long time before we can actually get our arms around these problems. So for us to achieve the ultimate victory, we need to work together. We need to get partnerships because the different countries and regions, we are not all of us equally resourced. Others are better resourced, others are poorly resourced. So we can only be better resourced if we move together as a team so that ultimately we can be in a position to overcome and to actually mitigate against all the challenges that we face. For me, that is the essence of the, of the conference we have today.